Pemandangan seperti ini bukan merupakan hal yang bisa Anda lihat setiap hari. Seorang bule mengendarai becak di lintas Sumatera lengkap dengan bendera merah putih di atasnya. Scott Thompson Pria asal Skotlandia berusia 48 tahun ini memulai perjalanannya pada 27 September 2015. Day 19, no it's not, it's day 18. Uh, we got uh, two short days left after this and um, heading down to Van der Lampel. I, uh, if you could exclude, let's speak, if we exclude the, uh, these final days and the, uh, the opening day, we pretty much uh, held the pace I think that we were open to about 135 k's a day uh, so it'll be about 130 I guess kilometers per day on average Scott menempuh perjalanan sejauh 2601 km melintasi tujuh provinsi mulai dari Aceh, Sumatera Utara, Riau, Jambi, Sumatera Selatan, Lampung hingga Banten Aksi ini merupakan bagian dari misi Becak Terus yang bertujuan untuk meningkatkan kesadaran sosial sekaligus mengumpulkan donasi bagi empat yayasan, yaitu YCAB Foundation, Mary's Cancer Kiddies, Wisma Cheshire, serta Yayasan Puspita. Hari ini merupakan hari ke-19 perjalanan Scott. Setelah 18 hari yang penuh tantangan, akhirnya ia mengayuh becaknya meninggalkan Pulau Sumatera dan bertolak menuju Banten. Day 19, uh, 89 km down to the southern tip of Sumatra. Uh, when we get across to at Sumatra behind us, you can just see in the uh, the distance there, we're about an hour out of port. And uh, if I just swing round, you can see Java. We're in the middle of the Sunda Straits. And um, wow, 19 days to get through Sumatra. It was... Um, It was good. Yeah, I'll be I'll be happy to get back to Jakarta tomorrow. Yes, uh, uh, day 19, right? Day 18 today. Ah, so today. Day 20, day 20 tomorrow, and uh, that'll get me into Jakarta. And then I know these wonderful people at um, Waikap have arranged a small gathering on uh -huh. on Sunday to to wrap the whole thing up. Yep. And I hear the Minister of Sports going to be there. Really? Thank you very much. Oh, uh, great. Which, um, be honored <laughs> but yeah I'll just I'll be thankful to get back in the office on Monday and get back to normality really on Monday yeah. you're, you're not gonna take any uh, I mean, no leave left no, no. <laughs> wow I just get back to the office and get back to just being Scott Thompson <laughs> okay thank you dalam rangka menjalankan misi ini, Scott telah memodifikasi becaknya dan menamakannya Flying Merah Putih. Becak inilah yang setia menemaninya menjalankan aksi ini, sekaligus mengantarnya meraih rekor dunia untuk perjalanan terjauh dengan becak. I got the idea. I was searching for something different that hadn't been done before, and um, I considered the becak as a traditional mode of transport. Um, I guess it's in some quarters would be considered out of date, but in my view, it's still. It's strong, it's sturdy, it's reliable, it's not particularly quick, but it'll eventually get you to where you want to be. And that was really the idea. I thought, let's use a, um, a bed shack to raise awareness. I uh, think it was quite simple. We w wanted to raise as much money as possible and as much awareness as possible for for, for uh, Yaya Sands um, based out of Jakarta. And, and there was really, You know, obviously there was the physical challenge, the sport element of it, um, that gets people interested 
in the story and that was important that um, that part of being able to narrate a tale but ultimately the goals were very simple um, and that was to um, raise exposure and raise money for the Jayasan. Hingga saat ini donasi yang terkumpul mencapai hampir 5,8 miliar rupiah. There was no real target um, as I said as much as possible but um, it's actually almost 5.8. I guess as I said before um, one rupiah is better than no rupiah. So it's, it's just just do something and raise something then um, even if I didn't raise any money at least we raise awareness. Scott memiliki alasan tersendiri memilih Pulau Sumatera sebagai tempat menjalankan misi sosial ini. I um, looked at how much leave I had. Um, I could take three weeks. I looked at the distance um, from Banda Aceh to Jakarta and I thought that would be a reasonable challenge to try and get you know, a, a bed truck that weighs about 70 kgs or more and get it from one end of Sumatra to the other and, and in the process as well to help promote it and break our Guinness Book of Records um, by doing that. We probably saw about three or four accidents, fresh accidents on the way. Um, and unfortunately because they see, you know, someone like me, an old guy with a bed check um, and a bully at that. And so a few people on motorbikes went into the back of trucks twice. Um, but they were okay, they weren't hurt, but I guess they were more interested in, in, uh, in looking at me and, and not watching the road in front of them. But no, thankfully um, we didn't see any um, you know, nasty incidents considering the, you know, the smoke that we had to go through as well. Beca terus merupakan proyek Amal Scott yang ketiga. Pada 2010, ia berlari sejauh 250 km di Gurun Sahara untuk membantu anak-anak penderita kanker. Dua tahun berselang, ia kembali berlari sejauh 1.250 km dari Bali ke Jakarta selama empat minggu. Uang yang terkumpul dari aksi kedua ini digunakan untuk membantu YCAB mendirikan rumah belajar bagi anak putus sekolah. You know, I don't, uh, sure there's a, a sense of, there's a challenge in the sense of accomplishment in doing something that's um, both physically and mentally, because it's an endurance type event, similar to the other ones. Um, but, you know, if I can, you know, if I can do that and at the same time throw a hand out to, to help, then, um, but at the end of the day, you know, I think that and I've said this before, is no matter who you are, somebody's helped you to get you to where you are and, and that's all I'm trying to do is all I'm trying to do is re reach a hand out and to help uh, those less fortunate than I am. Pria yang berprofesi sebagai direktur perusahaan Batubara ini mengaku beruntung memiliki keluarga dan kerabat yang sangat suportif. Meski awalnya sempat menentang, namun mereka akhirnya mendukung aksi nekatnya tersebut. Initially, they just sort of shook their heads and thought, no, this doesn't, are you sure this doesn't make sense? Um, have you checked the road? Which I hadn't. Um, I'm glad I didn't actually, because it was, it was a pretty busy road. Uh, but, you know, they, um, you know, initially, I guess they're a little bit worried, but once the the story got going and the planning started, then everyone was very supportive from from my office to family to friends. I came down Lintas Timor, and it, so it was a longer distance. It wasn't like going up through Bukit Tinggi and up and down, but as you saw today, it's still quite hilly and all the way through uh, Riau, Jambi, it was just up and down, up and down. On, on a bed check, you know, it, it's, it's heavy, it's not like a spider, and that creates the story. Um, so it was really just the obstacles were just getting up every day, 
and getting started because you're wet from sweat and then you get a lot of friction rub and you get a bit uncomfortable but um, as long as you keep your, uh, your, um, your head strong then your body follows. Tantangannya itu adalah truk asap. Kan kita tahu Sumatera e, mulai dari Pekanbaru sampai ke daerah Palembang itu asap. Dan kita tuh sempat mengalami e, delay karena asap itu betul-betul gelap sekali, tebel sekali. Yang kita biasanya berangkat jam 6, kita harus tunggu sampai jam 8 lewat, jam 8 lewat untuk kita jalan lagi. Dan itu begitu pekat gitu. Tantangan buat kami yaitu kalau di lapangan menjaga keselamatan spot. Yang saya lihat adalah di sepanjang jalan dari Banda Aceh sampai ke atau di sepanjang Sumatera, tanggapannya semua baik. Baik sekali. Ucapan ataupun kalimat yang biasa didengar ya adalah "Hai Mister". Semangat. Bahkan kalau truk-truk kadang-kadang lewat sambil mereka kasih klakson, terus mereka angkat tangan jempolnya begitu. Banyak juga warga masyarakat yang ngejar. Iya yang ngejar, jadi mereka ada yang naik motor, naik mobil, kejar spot, begitu. Karena mereka pernah lihat di salah satu TV swasta, mereka tahu apa uh, yang sedang dilakukan oleh spot. My biggest supporter, um, I have to say my wife and my daughter, um, but um, I, you know, I've, uh, it's amazing it, when you're when you're out on the road and you've been on it for 10 hours, 11 hours, 12 hours, you're really tired and someone that you don't know smiles or just gives a thumbs up um, you know you're making friends instantly with that person you're looking them in the eyes and that gives you such a great boost of, of um, it, uh, it just inspires you actually to, to continue and to, to push on through and you get a lot of support from that from people you actually don't know providing you with a smile um, yeah makes you feel good put in my blog post that that um, at a moment I sort of where I still wasn't halfway and you know you just sort of think oh this is a this is far this is so far um, you know but to be honest no I never really felt that I would I'd call it quits I would just you know I just, just see it through my only concern is that, that I wouldn't be back in time for the office on Monday um, but uh, it's like taking on any project that you know, if you just keep, keep persevering, just keep at it and um, you know eventually if you can work your way through the lows, the highs will come back. I've stopped quickly on uh, day 10, we started about two hours ago. Yeah, just uh, just coming up for two hours, it's just after eight o'clock and um, just uh, give you a sense of what's out there. It has lifted, but it's still. I think this morning, I can smell the smoke as well. Um, but as uh, as a good friend was saying, I, I you know, prep and planning is uh, is just as important as the execution. And he reckoned I should have been on twenty a day at cigarettes, the red packet, extra strength uh, to get my lungs adjusted to this but uh, funny we were in the got to the hotel last night and uh, I think it was a manager or assistant manager came up to me and said to me it was equivalent of smoking 500 cigarettes a day so there you go Rich you ought to uh, bring yourself up here and um, get your lungs uh, full of this wonderful Sumatran air it's a bit unfortunate as I keep saying but um, the one positive is there's no mosquitoes um, as far as I can tell Anyway, we'll chat to you again in a bit. Okay, and what keeps you going? Um, getting home to my family. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and 
the last time I see things like this will be uh, will, will be good. But that's part of doing something like this to to raise awareness. Um, so yeah, I think we'll enjoy today. The, all the Yaya Sands will be there. All the kids who meet to the Yaya Sands will be there. Um, so yeah, I guess it would be uh, a good day, but it could be also quite an emotional day as well because that has been a bit of a struggle the, uh, the past three weeks. But I feel still tired, but in a good place. Hari ini merupakan hari terakhir perjalanan Scott yang mengayuh becaknya penuh semangat menuju Debris BSD di mana para kerabat serta anak-anak dari empat yayasan penerima donasi telah menunggu. Close to tears. I'm really that happy. I'm that happy. I'm just delighted. I'm, I'm delighted. I'm finished, but I'm more delighted just to see everyone here. Thank you very much for your support. Jadi saya mewakili teman-teman, mungkin khususnya disabilitas Indonesia. Terima kasih untuk Mr. Scott Thompson yang udah merelakan waktu, energi. Semuanya untuk kami, kita bangga sekali ya punya ada orang yang seperti Scott, Mr. Scott ini mau dia. Apalagi dalam waktu dekat ini, perjuangannya itu nggak mudah. Menurut kami, perjuangan yang sangat berat. Dengan perjuang ini, kita juga akan melakukan yang terbaik, khususnya disabilitas, karena kita bisa mandiri. Uh, thanks for Mr. Scott, uh, he, he our hero. And he passed the the way so so far and so dangerous small uh, and in his becha is so many children is really need uh, to about his care so we're so grateful for him. Thanks for thanks for Mr. Scott. Terima kasih banyak buat Mr. Scott Thompson yang udah support Wisma Cheshir. Pastinya bentuk support dari dia bakal banyak membantu kita Wisma Cheshir residennya terutama untuk untuk keseharian kita, untuk menunjang keterampilan kita. Dari Wisma Cheshir sendiri juga ada program yang namanya Young Voices. Dan itu proyeknya salah satu dari Wisma Cheshir yang ikut dibantu sama Mr. Scott Thompson. Jadi siapanya sih terima kasih banyak buat supportnya. Semuanya mudah-mudahan uh, bisa ngebantu kita teman-teman disabilitas untuk bisa maju, untuk bisa lebih kreatif dan berkembang. Maybe a million people in Jakarta fitter than I am. Um... But if they can go out and, and do it faster, do it quicker, I've said this in, in the newspaper, and raise more money, then that, that's the legacy. That's what I would want to be able to leave, to encourage someone to go out and, and say, okay, Betchak Trust did it in 20 days, we'll do it in 19. You know, no matter where you go in, in, in the world, and it's not you know, because I'm here in Indonesia, but there's people marginalized in every country on this planet. And um, so it doesn't matter where you are, you know, you can go out and it doesn't, you don't have to run from Bali to Jakarta and you don't have to take a bed check from Banda Aceh to Jakarta just to find a way to, um, to reach out, to build a bridge with your community.